This is the Good Ology Podcast, episode number six. How you doing? Welcome to the Good Ology Podcast, an audio journey of inspiring people who have overcome obstacles and have worked to make the world a better place. This program presents stories of empowerment and positivity and helps you to answer the questions, how can I help and how can I serve? Find out these answers now and more with your host, Bernie Fallon. Hey, thanks for being here. Yes, it's a beautiful day. I've got a great guy for a guest today. His name is Robert Farrell. Robert lives in San Diego, but he was born in Ankara, Turkey. As an infant, he was left on a street corner. He did make it to an orphanage, but he almost starved to death. Thankfully, his parents, Jim and Alice Farrell, adopted him. In our discussion, Robert is very sharp in discussing personal development material. He talks about great influences in his life and great books that he recommends. He's written 400 blog posts in a year. And that's one of the things that impressed me about Robert. And he also has a great radio show on Blog Talk Radio. I'm very happy I had a chance to meet Robert, and I think you're going to get a lot out of it. Thanks a lot, and enjoy your day. It's a beautiful day. Everywhere you look, there's positive things in the world. Today, we're speaking with Robert Farrell. Robert, the world is more positive because you are in it. Your honesty and integrity. (laughs) Are you ready to share what a positive influence you are? Thank you. Yes. Thank you for having me here. My pleasure. Uh, Robert Farrell is a career coach, a blogger a radio show host, and much more. What struck me is that Robert has written over 400 blog posts in basically a year, and he produces his radio show while walking, thus killing two birds with one stone. Robert, can you tell us basically what you do today in a nutshell? Today, professionally what I'll be doing, it's a holiday, but that doesn't really matter to me. I have two two or three tasks that I want to accomplish today, actually several. I want to write two blogs today, one in the morning and one in the evening. That'll each of those will take a bit of time. I also want to do a half hour radio show. Both the blog and the show are called Why Don't I Just Get Started? In addition, I have a list of reading material that I want to go through today, and all of these things are aligned with my long-term goals. Excellent. And you set goals every morning on things that you want to get done? Well, technically, I set tasks. Okay. Goals are long-term. For example, a goal I have is a house near the beach. That is a goal. I can't get it today. I don't have the wherewithal to get a house on the beach today but I might be able to get it in six months, a year, two years from now. So that's a goal. Then I have objectives. What things do I need to do to reach that goal? I might need to make more money. I might need to get a job. I might need to get my tax refund or whatever. These are objectives, and these are things I need to do over the next few days, weeks, and months. And then I have tasks, and those are things I do daily. And this idea comes from Michael Masterson. If you read his work, he uses these ideas so that you differentiate goals, objectives, and tasks. What's the name of his book? He's got several out, but you could start with The Pledge. And he has another book called Seven Years to Seven Figures and Automatic Wealth. Michael Masterson's great stuff. Great. Yeah, I will put that in the show notes for this episode. And before we get into what's going on in your modern day life, I want to kind of warm up a little bit. There's two words that I love. And those two words are, I like. I think when you say the words, I like, your energy, your inner energy begins to expand. And so when you think of the words, I like, Robert, can you give me three examples of what would follow that phrase? On a personal level, I like comic books. I'm a comic book collector. I like reading. I like my life. Awesome. I I could actually go on to several things, but those are the first three that come to mind. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, well, I can feel the the blood flowing now. (laughs) Um, Now, I like Expanded. 
What inspires you? What excites you? And what are you really passionate about? I'm passionate right now about my writing. It, it, it's an amazing... Can I talk a little bit about the genesis sure. of that? I've been writing in some form or another since I was 14 years old. So I'm not going to say how old I am, but it's been a long time. And I love writing. I've been a – I'm pretty good at it, if I, if I may say so. And what happened was – you mentioned the blogs, and if I could talk about that and what that's done in my life. Sounds great. What happened was uh, on December 30th, 2012, Sunday morning, it was about 7 in the morning. Everyone was asleep in the house, and I was crying. I was literally crying. And the reason I was crying was because my life felt stuck. It felt absolutely stuck. I wasn't moving forward on almost any level, and there there was no end at the number of people I would talk to about my troubles and my problems, but nothing was happening. And I was stuck in the same place for five years, professionally, emotionally, personally, spiritually. And I was crying and I, I just, I couldn't stand the way my life was going. And I started reading wake up and live by Dorothea brand. And it kind of got me excited and I remembered a saying that I wrote on Facebook, which is, when you don't know what to do, do what you know to do. And the one thing I knew and know to do is I know how to write. So I sat down and I wrote, why don't I just get started? And it was a question of frustration, of, of anger, of confusion. And then I wrote some more and more. And I wrote my very first blog. And I put my very first blog up. And since then, and it's been a little over a year, since then I've written 400 blogs. But the 400 wow. blogs is not the exciting part, even though that's, that's a fun accomplishment and I'm happy about that. The exciting part was how much I learned. And one of the things I learned is when we take control of one area of our life, suddenly we start taking control of other areas of our life. Sometimes we want to fix everything all at once, and it's too much. It's too impossible. But if you can take control of one area of your life, things will start to fall in place, I believe. That is awesome. You're right. So you said, when you don't know what to do, do what you know. Do what you know to do, yes. Wonderful. So... Your backstory, where were you born? I was born in Ankara, Turkey. And Wow, and how long did you live there? I lived there for four years. I'm actually what is called a foundling. I was left on a street corner in Turkey as an infant. I was found, placed in an orphanage. I was almost I almost starved to death in the orphanage because this was back in the the early sixties and they didn't have the consciousness of child care or all that. Right. And so I almost starved to death, but I was adopted by Jim and Alice Farrell, who were in Turkey because my dad was in the Navy and he was stationed there. And they were trying to adopt. And somehow, and I still don't even know the whole story myself, but somehow they heard about me and I was adopted. And I was there till I was about four, and then we lived all over the world because of the the military. And finally, I settled in San Diego, where I've been most of my life. Where did you go to school in your younger days? Uh, Scotland, Chicago, Maryland, Japan, Indiana, Monterey, San Diego. <laughs> Holy cow, I love geography, so I like hearing that. What an amazing story. Um, I didn't know that about the, the orphanage, and I'm just I'm very happy that things work out the way they, they did. And how do you feel about that? Well, it's a little mixed, honestly. When you're an adoptee, you, you go through things that are, are difficult because it's, 
you as a baby, even babies have some sort of sense that they're not with the people who gave them birth. I was very fortunate, though, that about two years ago, I went back to try to look for my mom. Now, I didn't find her, but just taking that trip, making that trip, it was, what would you call it? It was like a, an odyssey for me, if you will. And Catharsis? It was very cathartic. And yeah. again, even though I didn't find my mom, it was an amazing, it was one of the most amazing adventures in my life. And if you go on my Facebook page and go back about two years or so, there are all kinds of pictures that I put up, and I, I actually sort of journaled on Facebook as I was going through the experience. I found the orphanage. You know, it was an amazing, amazing experience. It was very healing. That's a great story. Wow. You know, I'm going to challenge you. One of the, the chapters in my book is called The Beauty of Problems. And considering the, the things that you've said about the Sunday morning on December 30th, the orphanage. Can you think of a, as kind of a metaphor, when I say the phrase, the beauty of problems, where if you look inside and, and see a problem and then you embrace it and overcome it and somehow you're stronger, can you give me an example in your life where that might apply? <laughs> How much time do we have? <laughs> well, as much as you want. I think, well, here's the thing. In his book, The Road Less Traveled, M. Scott Peck says life is difficult. And he's, he's using Buddhism, the ideas from Buddhism when he says this. But when we embrace that life is difficult, life is not difficult. Jim Rohn, no, I'm sorry, Brian Tracy says that life is, the problems are like the ocean, the waves of the ocean. They just keep coming and coming, and some of them are small, some of them are big. And Brian Tracy says it's problem, 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 crisis, problem, 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 crisis. And so life is just full of problems. It just is. Some of them are small, some of them are large. But if you, if you expect it, then they're really not problems. They're just things you have to deal with. The problem isn't right. the problem. The problem is how we view the problem. Excellent, yep. And, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a problem I had this morning. My alarm clock rang at 5 a.m. as it usually does, and I didn't want to get up. I had a problem right away. <laughs> and that's a problem. But if it really has to do with the attitude. It really, truly does, more than anything else. It, it, so much of life, I wrote this on Facebook, if – if you're not, if you don't have a headache, how did I write this? If, if you're not in physical pain, then all your problems, by definition, are in your head. And they really are. They're about perception and attitude. Fantastic. I agree with that. You know, we're talking about um, your life, your positive life. You like the way your life is going right now. And uh, what type of long-term goals do you have? Well, I'm looking at them right now. Because what I did, also based on Michael Masterson's work, I wanted to write seven-year goals, but that just seemed a little overwhelming for me. So I wrote a one-year goal, or one-year set of goals, okay. and here they are. I have a financial goal of having saved a certain amount of money, and my, oh, by the way, I wrote these goals in September of last year, so I've got about nine months left. I have a goal of a certain amount of money, which I'm not going to say, but I have that financial goal, and it's very specific. It is a certain amount. I want to have three books published, and I have one published so far. I'd like to be writing full-time or part-time professionally, and I want to read 10 books on financial growth by September of this year. So those are my long-term goals. I love the clarity in your goals is excellent. It helps. It really, really helps to write them down. And it really, really helps to put them in a place where you see them all the time. That's right. Everyone hears that, but not everyone does it. I don't see how you can do it any other way. Right. 
I'm going to ask you a, a series of questions that I've kind of got tagged or titled positive influence questions. All right. Can, can you remember a time when you did something for someone else that they really appreciated? Can you tell me about that? <laughs> you know, I was thinking about that and I thought I probably have, but I don't like to talk about it because just doing something for someone made me feel good, but I don't like to really brag about the things I've done. I, right. I hope that in my writing and in my radio shows, that those are positive things I've done that have helped people. I know when I uh, started on Facebook, I started writing little proverbs that I wrote. They were original things like, for example, when you don't know what to do, do what you know to do, or don't wait for opportunity, prepare for it. And I, I wrote a whole bunch of these sayings, and I wrote a few hundred of them over a three, four-year period. And everyone said, wow, you just made my day, or I really needed that. Thank you. And so I put together my first book, collecting a whole bunch of those sayings, and I put it together, put them together in a book called A Few Kind Words. It's on smashwords.com. A few, a few kind words. I was going to ask yeah. you what the title of the book was, A Few, a few kind, kind Words. Yeah. And it's just stuff that motivates and, and, and tries to help people feel better. And they help me. They really help me. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. By doing what you love, you are helping other people out, and they appreciate it. Yeah. So that's something I think I, I do that makes, hopefully makes the world a better place. Perfect. And can you remember a time when someone did something really special for you? And how did you feel about that? And how did you react? Throughout my life, I've had different people who've just been really, really kind to me and really patient with me. And, you know, when I was younger, like a lot of young people, I wasn't especially easy to deal with. Sometimes I was immature. I was selfish. I made bad decisions. And yet I, I still had people who loved me, who were patient with me, who didn't end the friendship because of my selfishness. And, you know, someone I'm thinking of right now, and I wish I could find him. His name was Larry Matranga, and he was my boss at 7-Eleven. And, you know, sometimes you don't realize at the time what good things you have in your life. But Larry... He was my boss, but he was like a father to me. And he, you know, he put up with a lot of my selfishness and my, my bad decisions. And I wasn't even, this is the amazing thing, I wasn't even a particularly good worker at that time. I was, I was lazy and I had a lot of issues I was dealing with. And, and for some reason, Larry did not fire me. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I don't know why. And not only did he not fire me, he took me back a couple times when I left the job to do other things, and he he was so dependable for me, and I and I think I took him for granted, and I didn't realize it until years later how kind he had been and and what an influence he was in my life. He was a positive, stable influence. That's that shows a lot of confidence on his part. He was amazing, and and he never talked about it. He just kind of. You know, I would go off and take another job, and then it wouldn't work out, and I'd come back as if I, you know, he owed it to me to hire me again. And, of course, you know, I was young. I was selfish. You know, a lot of times when we're younger, we don't think what our actions, how they affect others. And they did. They, they affected him. But he rarely took me to task for those things. He was just wonderful. And I, I wish I knew where he was because I, I'd love to just – be in relationship with him again. He was a great guy. That's awesome. I'm glad you shared that story. Yeah, he was great. Um, can you think of what the best piece of advice you've ever gotten was? Oh, <laughs> I, I read a lot. And I guess I'm going to recommend a book because I, I didn't get this directly from him. But Stephen Pressfield wrote a book called The War of Art. And okay. if I could only have 10 books on a desert island, this is one that I would take with me. And it's not The Art of War, but The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. And it's all about having a purpose, but also recognizing that when you move forward in your purpose, you're going to have what he calls resistance. There's going to be resistance. 
and it's going to come from within and it's going to come from without. And you just have to keep moving forward in your purpose no matter what, no matter what. And That makes sense. That's excellent. And the more you do, it's like the beauty of problems is really locating that resistance. And then all of a sudden, that resistance is not there anymore. You've become stronger and more free. Yes, but it's a daily battle. Uh, yeah, it sure is. I'm not going to lie. I Every day, I mean, as I, you know, we've said, I've written over 400 blogs. And rarely, rarely is there a time when I just sat down and wrote and banged it out and it was done. I, I fought my ADHD. I fought being distracted. I fought wanting to even do it. I fought the whole concept of what am I doing? But, you know, what's the point of this? And I don't have anything to say. I mean, and I fight these things pretty much every day. And I wish I could say, you know, after a while, it gets easier. I wish I could tell you that. It, it hasn't gotten easier. I, and then this is one of the things that people say, yeah, it gets easier if you keep doing it. It doesn't. It doesn't get easier. The battle's every day, but if you recognize that the battle's every day, you won't panic. Right, and that's the impressive thing about you is considering all that, you consistently continue to get it done, and you do it with an honest approach. And that's what I notice about the radio show is that you're honest, and it's quite a, quite a different niche that you do it uh, every day while walking for 30 minutes. You actually produce a radio show while walking. That's very cool. Thank you. That was an idea from a friend. <laughs> so uh, another quick question here. Who was your greatest influence in your life? Well, spiritually, Jesus Christ. Okay. Professionally, my old boss, Larry Matranga. Um, so many people. I, I, I couldn't even list. I, I would have to say a lot of my influences are authors. The Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, Stephen Pressfield, yeah. um, Shakespeare, uh, uh, Stan Lee, who, who created a lot of the Marvel comics. So many people. And I'm, and I'm reading, I read all the time, and, and those are my influences. I, I Honestly, I, I think of an art teacher I used to have uh, when I was going to community college who I said, you know, I just approached him one day and I said, sir, what school did I go to? And he told me, go to UCSD because you're, you're smart, Farrell. He called me Farrell. Mm -hmm. Farrell, you're smart. Go to UCSD. You know, go. And, and I just went and signed up that literally that day. <laughs> I mean, just so many people have been so kind to me in my life. So there's some people that are, are there supporting you, and then other ones I noticed that you actively seek, like the authors and, you know, through your interest in, in comic books and reading. Um, very interesting. So two different sources. Yeah, we have to I'm going to ask you. Help sometimes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say we have to seek out help. And if, you know, whatever you're doing in life, I, I think we need a mentor. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, too often I've tried to do things on my own without a mentor because I want to get the message out that I feel I have inside. But I've noticed that when I work with someone, I produce exponentially. Exactly. So the, the, the final question that I have is, is talking about making the world a better place. We live in a, a beautiful world and it's just, there's some amazing things going on that we can appreciate and be grateful for. But if we're honest, we can see that, you know, there are parts of the world that need help and need to be better. So I'm going to ask you the question. Let's say that a good algae radio listener bought 25 of your books. How would this make the world a better place? Well, it would give me more money, and that would make the world a better place. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> well, if, if somebody bought 25 of my books, then that person would assume – I would assume give them to their friends, and 25 people would have positive thoughts every day. Everything comes from the way we think. Everything. Well, I'll say 98%. I mean there are some things that just happen in life, but most things come from the way we think. So it's really important that we feed ourselves with positive thoughts. 
we feed them. Absolutely. Uh, I love that. And that's what your book does. And um, your book sounds like a good reread book. So someone can read it once and then, then read it again and, you know, months later and probably pick up different things on that subsequent read. Well, and not only that, you could read one thing a day and say, oh, cool, that's a good thought for today and maybe read something later that day or the next day. There's hundreds of little positive thoughts there. Yeah, I, love it. I wrote them all. There are, I don't think there are any quotes from other authors. They're just things that I wrote. They're all Robert Farrell originals. Yeah. All right. I'm going to ask you this other one because I see it listed here. And this is something that I've, I've had a contest with, with my website, which is goodology.com. And I had a contest and they, I gave away $100. I do that with different contests. So the question was, if I gave you a gift of $100, what could you or would you do to make the world a better place? You know, I thought about that. I had to actually, it's funny, one of my things is I would use some of it to pay down my debts because I think debt imprisons us. Right. And and I think it's important that we're free. But it wouldn't go a whole long way to paying off debts. I might, I might give it to someone anonymously that was in more need than I'm in. It would just be fun, or I might even divide it up into ten tens and find ten people that could use some money and give it to them. I mean, there are a lot of things I, I could do with that. Well, that's interesting, doing it to several people. You know, I notice where, you know, I'm a sucker for a homeless person, so I always have to stop. And But if I'm giving um, someone one dollar, you know, the figure a hundred dollars together is a lot of money, but when you break it up, it's gone quickly. If I give someone a dollar, someone who's homeless on the street, the dollar is not going to last that long, although it's very important to that person. But I think if I shake their hand, look them in the eye, and spend a few minutes talking with them, I think that interaction is worth more than the dollar. So it's like if you gave 10 people $10, you know, you are injecting positive influence into the life of 10 different people. So that's cool. Thank you. So, Robert, uh, I want to know how we get a hold of you. What is your website? Um, if you want to include a phone number, email, or anything else that you'd like to share. Sure, absolutely. My phone number, and, and anyone's free to call me if they need coaching, mentoring, writing, editing, uh, public speaking. I do all those things. I can be reached at 619-672-0378. I have a blog. It's http colon backslash backslash Robert F as in seven or as in feral Robert F seven one dot blogspot dot com. I also have a radio show on Blog Talk Radio, and that radio show is called Why Don't I Just Get Started. And I haven't counted the radio shows. I know I've done probably a couple of hundred of them. But there are a bunch of radio shows to listen to. They're all archived, and your listeners can listen to any of them. I love it. Excellent. So you've got a phone number, um, a website to visit, uh, and I also just wanted to mention or ask you, you've done uh, – resume coaching right yes and i was going to mention i'm on facebook and anyone okay. can look me up on facebook i'll be glad to friend them and i have a okay. facebook professional page called rjf career coaching and i do resumes i've written over 600 resumes in the last awesome six years well actually so you know what you're 700 doing. now so I've got a lot of resumes under my belt, and I, I can help people with resumes, cover letters, and the most important is the interviewing process. And I, I've spoken to groups about this, and I can come out and speak to your group about how to have a good resume and, more importantly, how to have a successful interview. Excellent. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today, Robert. And I wish you the best, and we'll keep in touch down the road. I look forward to it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Wow, that was a good discussion with Robert Farrell. 
He had a lot of different books that he recommends, so they're going to be all listed on the website. It's goodology.com, and you can find any link there. Also, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash goodology, and on Twitter, we are at goodology. Thanks again. Have a great day. See you soon.